Okay, so today's video, we'll be looking at some curved slabs. So this is just a simple slab. If we look from the top, pretend it's a driveway or something. So it starts out, it's got a bit of a um, radius, 90 degree, and then um, have another slab similar to this one at the end. I modeled it as one slab by just uh, sort of, um, uh, you know, adding roundings. So you can see arc point over there. And if I click on this one, it's an arc point over there. The rest is just click, click, click. Um, uh, let's see how we're going to model this. Um, <clears throat> I'll go into transparent mode and I'll, uh, I think, uh, you know, in transparency, you don't see the edges. Uh, if you're in a merged view, you don't see the edges of a cast in situ so well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go double click display and at my cast in place parts, instead of showing them merge, I want to show them separated. Now, just remember, in this case, it, it doesn't matter because it's a single part. But if you have multiple parts, you will see lines and you need to go and uh, put it back to merge parts if you don't want to see it that way. OK, so now that we're there, let's just start. What we're going to do is just aim for 16s at 300, uh, top and bottom, both faces. And it's as simple as that. So how do we do this? OK, rebar, crossing. And the first thing we're going to do is pick the bar size. So I'll go to... 16 for a main and then the color traditionally is red for the main bar that I use and I'll leave the, all the settings except the target I'm going to make 300 and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover because this is our main our main our top layer that will be our top layer and this will be our top layer so I'll click there to pick the section and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add bottom reinforcement for now and now before I select okay because if I select okay it's going to take the whole slab we don't want that we only want this portion I'm going to hit my adjust guideline. As you can see from the yellow there, it will take the whole slab. And I'll bring that down to that intersection because we only want to put this reinforcement in that area and say OK. And that takes care of that. While we're in the command, we might as well do the other part. Also, just bottom reinforcement, hit our guideline again, and then bring that to the grid. Make sure we only have that part and we say OK. And with that, that's done. Now, before we move on, we might as well just wrap these little bars on. If I click on them, I can say, give us an end modifier. Make sure that I load my standards. And I'm happy with a 90 degree hook. And then also, um, you can see if I hover over this edge, all the bars, nothing lights up. I'm still in a multi-switch mode here. Yeah? So if I just click toggle and toggle again, I'm in a single mode. And now we can see our line pop up. And I'll just pick the edge of the concrete here. Yeah? And we get our hook over there and if I hover over the edge of the concrete yeah I get a hook over there and that wraps up that bar and now the next thing we need to do is just do these again and pick the edge of the concrete it wraps up that one pick the edge of the concrete it wraps up that bar okay so far so good so we've got those so let's look at the radial bars how do we do them so the best way to deal with the radial bar action is to use guidelines now I must just mention at this point, there is a difference between Tecla 2022 and Tecla 2021 where it comes to guidelines. In Tecla 2021, guidelines had three guidelines, so you could use that to do the uh, curved bars as well. In Tecla 2022, we've got two guidelines, so we cannot, if we do the distribution still, we cannot use that again. We've got to use longitudinal bars. <clears throat> and I'll show you how that works as we go along. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab guideline. And the first thing it wants it is again your your um, uh, property paint to see if your rebars are correct. And then at the bottom it's asking for a face. So I'll just flip this around to the bottom, pick the bottom face. And as you can see, tick is picking all of the face. Um, it doesn't matter because our guidelines will restrict where the bars are going to go, but it will matter if we do some of the other bars. And I'll show you how we fix that. So once we've got that, we can middle middle mouse because we don't need any more faces. Now Tekla is asking for the guideline locations. Now in this case, what we can do is we can pick the start of this, you know, where this tangential point is. Yeah, we can pick the start there. That's where we want the the guide to start. Now you can see um, in here. Yeah, um, it, it sort of uh, wants to snap in the ortho mode. Don't worry too much about if your line is acting up a little bit. Just go over to the other edge with the, with the arc ends and then middle mouse. So Tecla accepts that part. And now the last guideline, we do the same, same direction. We pick this edge and we hover over to this end, pick that edge. And now that we've got that, if you middle mouse, Tecla places the bars for us. 
Now, if we just go into control P, there's a few issues I can see already here. The first issue is, if we look at these bars, we can see we've got irregular spacing around here. There's a big gap, there's a small gap. And so now the reason for that is, if I just go and switch my uh, guidelines on, we can see we've got the straight line here. Now, if I click on that bar, on the contextual toolbar, there's an option here to say follow edges. It also exists over here. So what we can do is if we flick that switch, Tecla then follows the edge. And the reason it follows the edge is because we clicked on the edge when we put this in. Now that will give us a consistent spacing around this side, but we also need to do it on the back. So if I click on the secondary guideline, we can also just say follow the edge and it follows the outside edge. And now we have consistent spacing. The other problem that I see here is that we've got this the opposite around. We've got the spacing on the inside rather than the outside. So what we can do, if we click on this bar, we see this lights up yellow, that lights up blue. And if we click on the spacing line, nothing changes in the rebar set tab, which means this is the prim primary one. If we click on the other one, we can see that the pane changes and at the top it actually deals with secondary one. If we want this to be the primary one, all we need to do is on the contextual toolbar, there's a little one here. It says set as primary. If we hit that, that now becomes the primary. You can see it's now yellow and this one's blue. But now that we've got that primary, it's also inherited the previous spacing, which was 900 that it calculated. We can now bring this back to 300. And now this radial will be based on 300 around the outside. And the inside is whatever it is. <clears throat> All these bars are perpendicular to the edge. So whatever it calculates there, that is what it is. Now, what I want to do is address the hooks on these bars next. So a similar process, we click on the bar and we don't want to see our, uh, in, uh, our guideline anymore. So what I'm going to do is go over to visibility, switch off the guideline, make sure that our end detail modifiers is switched on because that's what we want to work with now. So I click on the bar, I go to end detail, I'll load my defaults. I'm happy with the 90 degrees, all the others are quite good. And then what I'll do is I'll click on this start and you can see nothing happens when I click on the start radial radial doesn't do single point so if you click there for a multi-point now I can click there and I can pick the opposite side and once I've got that I can middle mouse and that will insert the the end modifier first and again if we click on that and we click here follow edges Tecla will then follow the edge as the end modifier and we'll get our hooks there so we can do the same with the outside if we click here, we can go in detail, make sure that we're in multi pick point. We can click on this edge and then click on the opposite edge of the concrete, middle mouse, that will give us hooks. Now, these hooks say uh, uh, show here yeah, because it's sort of the line crosses this side, but if there was other bars that this would have, like you had splitters, this will have been a problem. So if you click on that and just make sure you're following the edge to make sure that you're actually getting the right end of the bar. Now with that in mind, <clears throat> we've got all these bars in. Now all I want to do is just optimize the spacing a little bit. So if I click on this bar, and again, I just make sure that I can see my, my guideline. I'll switch the others off so it doesn't uh, pollute the drawing so too much. So we can see what's going on. If I click on this and I go to my spacing, I can see that I've got zero there and, and 34 there. So what I can do here is, um, you can see there's actually two bars on top of each other here with the two zones uh, start. So in here, I'm going to say, if I look at my arrow, I can't see my arrow at the moment. So if I click here, the arrow is that case. So that's the start point. So if I just click on there to get the dimensions again. So I want the start to start out at, let's say, 100 millimeters. And then the end, I want to have 100 millimeters, same. And if I do that, I get 10 at 280. And I think for this exercise, that's fine. I will do the same on the other one. And the shortcut is click on the bar, grab the painter, and then hover over to the other side, click on this bar, and then say mod modify accordingly. And it will give us the same spacing as these. Now on these, at the moment we've got a zero and a zero. I think we just need to leave a little bit of space. Now they work a little bit differently. I am gonna introduce a gap there so we can see how this works. If we don't click the spacing bar, it assumes the primary bar is what you're going to change. So if I, maybe let me zoom up this area so we can look at this bar, this first bar here in the shape. If I change, this is the, the, the primary, this is the secondary guide. So if you look at the primary guide, it's what we're going to change here. If we say, let's add a 50 in there and add a 50 in there. If I say enter, you can see it's changed it here, but not here. And if we look at the other side, 
it's changed it here but not here what we need to do is also click on the primary and then put a 50 in there and a 50 in there and say enter and now you can see we've now achieved what we wanted to achieve okay with that done i think we're at the point where the engineer says that's great you've done a great job but um, this is too restrictive. I mean, it, it requires you to have exact uh, measurements on your driveway, your paving or whatever. He wants us to split these bars so we can get an L this side, L that side, but they've got to be exactly the same. Okay, so how do we do that? If we click on these bars, we can then uh, go to rebar uh, uh, tab and under visibility, I want to switch on my splitters. I'll switch off my guides. I don't need them at the moment. And then what I'll do is go over to splitters make sure I load my default so just everything is reset I am going to aim for the middle bar the middle lap and then yeah you can see again I don't see my blue line because I'm still in multi-point mode yeah so if I just flick it over to single point mode I can then hover across and let's say he's calling for a, a one meter bar at the end there we can hover over to the other side give it a one meter bar and that does that and now what we can do is just quickly go over to this bar and pick a splitter and then what we can do is pick the thousand again split it that side and go thousand yeah and split it that side so this time at this at this stage if we look at these bars and i click uh, inquire we can see we've got two lines we've got the l bar which is a thousand by 220 and we've got a straight bar which is 5350 and if we go to the other side and click on this bar and say inquire we have exactly the same 1,220 and 5,350. So at this moment, those bars are still 100% the same, which means same two lines in the bending schedule. Now, how do we get this to follow that? Okay, so the way I approach this is, I'll click on that, make sure that, that our split is light up, and then I'll go over to the edit, oh, not don't switch it off, edit, and then um, make sure we see it. And under construction object, I'll go circle, we want to use this circle. Now you can see as soon as we trigger that, these ones just dim, but they still stay alive, so I can snap to them. And then I can pick the middle of the of the um, center point of the slab's radius. I can make a, a circle there, and I can also make a circle over there because it's snapped. Now I know that the splitter that I'm going to put around here will line up exactly with that, which will ensure that the bars should be the same. So once we've got that, we also need a middle line because we need to have a snap point in the middle. So I'll draw L, construction line, and I'll hover over to that point there. That gives me a 45 degree. And now we've got a midpoint. Why do I need a midpoint for the, for the splitter? Because um, we don't have an edge to follow. Um, if I click on those bars and I go splitter, I've still got the same stuff. Now with the splitter, we at the top that says follow edges we do have a follow edge problem but there's no edge here there's only a face so it's never going to work and i'll show you how that is if i click here start point and again i can't click because it's um this is a, a guided input um, so we need to go to multi-point mode yeah and if i click there i can also click this side so i'll just illustrate something for you quickly if I click that side and I say accept, you can see I take that <clears throat> tries to split those, it misses those. If I take this one and I say follow edge, nothing happens because there's no edge to follow. So the result uh, is that you need to add another point in here. So if we click this one and we move it up and it doesn't want to move. So let me just go click. We pick this point, just move it up out of place. So it generates a node and then I want that node to go there. Once we've got that, we can see that we've got this linear this linear sort of um, splice. So what we can do is if we click on that, we can then just go and change this to an arc point. And that will give you that fanned arrangement of your cut. So we can repeat the same on the top. So if we click here now, knowing what we've done there, we can just go splitter. We can pick the start. We can pick the midpoint and we can pick the end point. And once we've got that, we can middle mouse, take the, um, splices those or splits those in a linear fashion straight line and then what we can do is click on the node once more and just change that to an arc point and we have our radials on that side now if we look at this at this point in time the expectation would be that these l bars and those are exactly the same so are these and these exactly the same as that and we also expect these to be the same as that but let's see if that's happened. If we right click here and say inquire cast unit, 
we can look at this and we say, oh, okay, hold on. We do have those, 126 are all the same, but the ones around the fan, something happened here. We've got a few that are odd. I mean, there's 14 of them that are wrong. So where does the 1005 come from? So basically what's happening here is because it's a split, and if you look at this line, you know, it's splitting the bar. Um, some of these bars have a different sort of angle than the others. So you generate that small little tolerance that it's giving you a different a different uh, value. So my way of fixing this, and I think a good way to illustrate this is to go to visible and put on your color group so you can actually see what's happened. You can see these are all the same bars. These are all the same. And there's a few of there that's the same. And then these colors are different. And then if you look on the other side, these are all blue all the way around. So they're the same. So we sort of got 80% there. So just to ensure that exactly we, we get exactly what we want, the trick here is that if we click on this bar and we go to visibility, we can switch off our splitter now, ensure that our in detail modifier comes back on, because that's what we're going to work with, and then pick the, the um, uh, end modifier. We can then go over to uh, adjustment type and we can say we want a bar length, we want to fix a bar length, and the bar length we want to fix is a thousand millimeters now as soon as we do that look at that it's adjusted all those bars and they all have the same group now so we've guaranteed that those bars are exactly the same as those now i would imagine the question would be is how did you know it's going to change that leg and not this leg well this is not a leg this is a hook if you look at the face if we put on the faces there's only a face at the bottom there's no face on the side so this is an end modifier with a hook so the only bar leg it can change is this bar leg so I hope that makes sense. So just to make sure we get the same result on the other side, we do have a good result there, but just to ensure that, it, you know, when we move bars, nothing goes goes wrong, we can click on that modifier. And again, we can go adjustment type, bar length, and we can ensure that we want a thousand leg on that one. And if we do that, it just confirms it. And now we can have a look at, at what's happened in the bending schedule. If we now go and say, give us a concrete, right click, inquire, cast unit, we end up with two lines only in the bending schedule. So we've got our 140 L bars, which is the outside bar, and we should have exactly half of that as the straight bar that links them up in the middle. So um, I hope I hope that was uh, clear what I did there. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch off my con construction lines for a minute. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just quickly deal with the, <clears throat> excuse me, the distribution steel. Now, um, again, just note that in this exercise, it will be different in 2021 from 2022 in the sense that if we go to the guidelines, in Tecla 2022, you only have two guidelines to work with. So you cannot create a curved bar from it. In Tecla 2021, you do have three guidelines and you can create a, 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 a curved bar from it. So the way you create a curved bar in Tecla 2022 is by using your longitudinal bars, your longitudinal uh, um, direction. So what I'm going to do with that is if I click this longitudinal, make sure that all my settings are right, I'll pick a different bar color. And then in here, <clears throat> uh, maybe we want, to, we want to just come off the edge a little bit. So I'll just increase that to 100 and this to 100 and still 300, all the others are the same. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick the bar, the the um, range, the um, area that we wanna put cross bars in. We'll pick the bottom bars. And now this is gonna light up the whole the whole um, face. So if we do okay, we can see what Tecla's doing. It wants to draw bars on the whole face. Now this is where I say we're gonna do a bit of face editing. So if we put on our leg faces, we click on this bar, we can see where it's gone to. So all we need to do is let's just remove that node and this node because we'll deal with that slab separately we're also going to de delete this node and that node so that limits the radial bars to only where it's applied and now the trick here is if we switch off our leg faces the trick here is if we click on this one we already have a if we put our guidelines on we already have a guideline uh, running across there so what we can do now is in this in this uh, uh, this edge here we can say add a secondary guideline Make sure that we are on pick mode, multi-pick mode, and then click this edge all the way up to this edge over here and say middle mouse. 
that pulls that one correct. Now, the reason it's twisted like that is because we have a direction problem. We'll fix that now. And then if I click this edge and click that edge over there, we say, okay, that will flip it totally around. Now, all we need to do is if we click on this one, we can say flip the direction. And just like that, it's fixed up all those bars. Now, I hope that made sense. Um, looking at these, if you click on these radial bars, you'll see these little arrows that shows you the direction of the guideline, the direction of the guideline, the direction of the guideline. They really need to point in all in the same direction to achieve this. So what I did is when I inserted it originally, these were pointing down and I actually inserted these going up. So all I did is I flipped that one around to time with this one and that gave us that beautiful uh, curved bars. So the next thing we want to do now that we've got that is we want to insert bars here and we want to insert distribution steel there. Now there's two ways to deal with this. The first way is we're going to use faces and the face type. We definitely want to work on the far side. That's the bottom of the slab. So I'll click far side and I'm not sure which direction tech is going to pick yet. So we just pick one and then in here, I don't want to correct the whole face. I only want to select a rectangular area. And then also I want to just make sure that this is all okay and it looks like it's all okay. And now what I can do is I can hover over this edge. You can see the, the big uh, black arrow or cross that comes up. So I'll click on that corner. And when I hover across, I can already see why uh, my hand lines, I'm in the wrong direction. So I can just hover over to my contextual and just flip them to the other side. And now what I can do is I can just pick this end. And just like that, we have exactly the same bars as we had before. We will have to just look at layering maybe. Um, it doesn't look like we've got a problem with layering so far. Everything looks good. And now for this side, I'll do a different method. I will pick the more point method and make sure I've got linear and make sure that my bar setup is still the same. And yeah, I'm gonna say the bar I wanna put in is that shape, middle click to accept that. And then the span direction is just all along this edge. And just like that, we are replicating exactly the same result as we did in this part, but use two different methods. Now, with that in mind, what we can do is just start wrapping up these bars. So if we click on this bar, again, what I'm going to do is just switch off my guidelines. I don't want to see them. I want to work with end modifiers. So what we can do now is go to end modifier. Just make sure that we load our standards because we did fill in some leg distances here. And now if I hover over there again, nothing lights up. Again, yeah, I'm in my multi-point mode. So just keep on flicking it until you get to single point mode. Hover over the edge of the concrete and introduce a hook to that one. Okay, next we're going to um, go over to the other side. We'll pick this one. We'll go to end detail, hover over to the edge of the concrete and it, it finalizes that. Now, the only thing to uh, left to be done on this is to look at the splice here. <clears throat> now, if I go into plan mode from the top, we can see that this bar and this bar really needs to lap. You know, we need a bit of um, uh, uh, lapping in here. So the way we can deal with this is if we click on these bars, they're the easiest ones to deal with rather than try and fix the radial bars. Again, we'll have our head over to visibility, switch on our guidelines because that's what we're going to work. I'll switch off the end modifier. And then in here, I'll just, uh, you know, in, uh, switch on my... Uh, dimension so I can see what I'm working with. So we've got a hundred there, which pretty much ties in with that one. Now these bars are 16 bars, which means the outside diameter, the actual diameter is 19. So the idea is let's push this one across by 19 moles. And then on the other side, we can, we can push this one over, which means we'll reduce this hundred millimeters. So how does that work? Let's have a look. So the start, if we look at the arrow, and uh, let me just click on it again to get the arrow. So the arrow is pointing this way. So um, what we can do, if we want it the other way, we could just go swap. Now it's the other way. So this is the start point now. And I'll again just switch on that. So this start point over here, we can increase it by 19 moles. So it's 119. And on the other side, we want to decrease it. So move all of them over by a bar width. That will be 81. And once we've done that and we say modify, we can now see that these are really offset precisely all of them by a bar width. And now we've got, what you can do is very easy. <clears throat> We can grab that bar and say, give us an end detail, load our default. And for the hook type, we can say we don't want a hook, but for the adjustment type, we want a end offset and the end offset is, well, I'm just gonna take a guess now, let's say 500 millimeters, okay? And then what we can do is hover over the bar, click, 
and it extends that bar nicely touching here and extends it in and that is totally acceptable it doesn't have to follow the curve and that sort of sorts that out and now on this one what we can do with this one is exactly the same and a quick way to fix that once again is to click on this bar grab your painter head over to this bar and let's just hope the direction is right the direction is right and we can say modify and that moves all of them over for us same as uh, with the other bars and now all we need to do is say give me that in modify it's still set to 500 hover over this bar and it extends it and just like that we've got all the bottom reinforcement in in both directions with the hooks now let's just have a look at what we've got in the bending schedule so in the bending schedule we now have our 140 bars which is our l's running around the outside we've got our 70 straight bars which is half of those that links them we've got these 42 l bars which is 21 it's these ones at the end here which matches the ones at the end there and then these non-standard bars yeah is really those curved bars those circular bars that are all different they one 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 because they're all different lengths they have all different radiuses so they have to be separated okay now to get the top layer um, it's a matter of i'll just click over to an elevation that shows the side down and i've got a few other elements in here but what we can do with this is we can just grab those quickly just like so and say right click uh, shift and then say show only selected that didn't work uh, show only selected that's interesting so if I grow just want to make sure that I've got everything yeah so if I grab that oh this is uh, grab right click shift show only selected and it doesn't show that that's interesting anyway it doesn't matter if we just go over to yeah and then if I double click this uh, rebar set tab yeah very quickly it switches the others also means I'm only going to be selecting rebar sets but before I do that we can see that our our um, uh, XY our orientation is still global we need to get it perpendicular to the view so if we go control P and then what we can do is we can go view and in the work plane we can say parallel to view plane and click on the view and that will change our coordination and then what we can do is in here we can say give us all the reinforcement and then what we can say is right click copy special mirror and then we can pick the middle of the slab and I'll just want to make sure that I pick the middle of the slab middle of the slab control P again and then I can really just uh, use a orthogonal and say copy and that will replicate all those bars in the top face so if we just uh, go and reset our plane to the global plane change okay and we can really close this window now because we don't need them anymore if we then head over to our slab we can see we now have top and bottom reinforcement exactly replicated so the only thing we need to do is look at the clashes <clears throat> and by clashes what i mean is these hooks you can see they're all in line now the easiest way to deal with it rather than to try and move bars around is that if we go to rebar under our visibility make sure that we've got our in detail modifier switch on so we can see them so the easiest way to deal with this I'll start at the bottom is to click the modifier and I say I want to rotate that hook by five degrees so that's only an L bar you can see it's an L bar so it doesn't matter how much it rotates it doesn't change the bar shape or its dimension we'll do the same in the top click that modifier and say rotate that by five degrees and now we can see without having to move bars we can we can actually just um, you know uh, uh, offset them slightly to the side and that's that's what they do on site a lot of the time so if I click there again just type sometimes you need to use uh, three degrees or you need to use seven degrees you know you can you can figure it out so, you know just keep on turning until they're out of the way um, so if I click on this modifier let me just uh, click again select the modifier and then um, it's strange how sometimes I don't get things selected there we go uh, and then five degrees that that sort of turns that one around so now all the green bars are sorted out and they don't clash with each other and now we have to focus on the red bars so if we click here again we can go five degrees on this side and click on this one five degrees over here that sorts out that side and now we need to do the same with these um, radial bars again in here five degrees and if we pick the top ones we can click on the modifier 
they have got a click problem again. Um, modifier. And then lastly, we can have a look at, well, it's not lastly, we still have to do the other side. So if I click here again, five degrees. And if we click the top bar, we can click on the modifier and do five degrees. And then um, just the outside and then we're done. If I click on this one, pick this one, uh, go five. Obviously you could have, uh, you know, tried to select them all in one go. Uh, but you really need to have the reinforcement highlighted to be able to select those. So unfortunately in this regard, uh, they've got a layer problem. We just need to, to look at that afterwards. And sometimes when you copy mirror, this does happen. You have to just go and check either your, your splices or your layers. So I'll just sort this out now. If I click on this, switch on my leg faces, click on the layer face, we can see that's gone to one and that's supposed to be in layer two. And just like that, that's fixed up. I just want to make sure this one, that's one, that's cool. And I also want to just make sure that the others are good. So the others look good. So there's no problem here. So I'll switch off the leg faces again. And then lastly, hover over to the last little end, end here. Click on this bar, click on the end modifier, put in our five degree rotation, uh, bottom bar, click on the end modifier, five degree rotation. Now that I believe is done. So all the bars align very nicely with themselves. They don't, they don't clash anywhere. They're not on top of each, every, each other. And um, hopefully if we click on the, on the end, I've still got uh, that selected. That's probably why I was battling to select the, the modifiers in the first place. If we go to inquire a cast unit, and now we'll see, we should have double up of everything else. So the 280 became, the 140 became 280, the 70 became 240, and the 42 became 84. And all the radial bars are now two because we have one top and bottom. So that's as optimized as you are going to get this slab. There is absolutely no opportunity of getting this more optimized than it is here. That's the absolute minimum amount of bars that you'll have in your schedule. Um, the one thing that you can look at is these bars over here are a bit long and you might get kicked back from the fabricator for that. And the solution to that is um, if you, um, if we, let's see if we can just isolate this for a minute. If we take those two bars, right click, and we say uh, show and select it. And uh, we'll try and put our construction lines on again. What we could do over here, if we go into, um, we could say, okay, hold on. It's the last of, let me just click one of them again. Just look at their length, inquire. So it's it's really the last one. So, but let's, let's do the last one, two, three, four bars. Let's do the last four bars. So once we've got these bars, what we can do is we can select the top one and we can say, give us a splitter, load the standard, make sure yeah that we're in multi-peak mode. And then what we can do is we can drag a line, first, second, third, fourth, fourth, let's do the, the, the four bars. And if we split those, and then what we can do is select this, make sure our splitters are on, we now just reselect that, sorry, reselect that bar. We can grab the split and say right click, a copy special linear, and we want to go down, which is Z minus 300, which is the slab thickness. And once we do that, and we say copy, we then replicate those split bars at the bottom. And now if we look at this, and we go inquire the bar, we can see we now have um, eight, which is these four and these four, and then after that, they in, 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 in threes, twos, and then ones. So the, the we haven't dropped down on lines, but we've got more, more bars in the group. So that's a pretty good solution. So once we've done that, you know, there's no more. If we click on the slab one more time and we look at inquire cost unit, we don't have in our bending schedules, we don't have, well, we still have, we do have some. So maybe we'll have to go a bit further than the five. Maybe we can do, you know, um, the top seven or so, but that's how you deal with the, the split. Um, well, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and, um, you know, I'll see you in the next video, but this was just a quick sort of introduction to, to curved slabs and how we can use uh, rebar sets and modifiers to our benefit to achieve our goals. Just remember that the differences, it's always good to look at the release notes on the Tecla uh, user assistance website. 
to make sure that you are familiar with what the difference is between the different Tecla versions and how to address them when you're detailing. So see you in the next video.